right, we welcome you to our services today. Today is March the 29th, 2020, and we are meeting in a somewhat dislocated way again today, but we're glad for this opportunity to gather together around the Word of God, pray that the hearts will be encouraged on this day. David said in Psalm 119, verse 40, 41, Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. Verse 43, And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. Verse 51, Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. And verse 58, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. So we'll gather today around the word of God and ask God to bless, to help, to meet with us we sure do need his help today. We'll begin with a psalm. My faith has found a resting place. I'm glad for a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. In these unsettled days and unsettled lives, we have a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. In a changing world, we have a changeless God. And in these uncertain times, we have a God of certainty. Sure is good to be a Christian and to know the Lord. If you're not, you ought to be today. And we'll talk about that a bit uh, later. For now, we'll see my faith is found resting place. sunshine that is outside uh, yesterday with the storms that passed through our area uh, you granted safety and we pray for those that were affected uh, by those storms already living in difficult times and then uh, difficulty placed upon top of that we pray for your grace and your strength to be uh, in their lives we're blessed to be a part of your great family we thank you for our church and we certainly miss being assembled together as we would normally be uh, father on a sunday uh, it would be the Sunday school hour and there would be boys and girls running around and uh, the people of God gathered here. We miss them today. Lord, we uh, thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be together uh, across uh, such uh, devices and uh, media and uh, the internet. And uh, Lord, it's, it's not the same as gathering together. But in these days, this is what we can do. And we thank you for the opportunity and uh, the means to do so. Pray that you bless our church family. God bless with health and comfort and safety and strength. And uh, Lord, to pray that you would give us a renewed uh, fervor and vision in our heart as we uh, spend time in our personal walk with you. And uh, Lord, may we look forward to the days that are coming ahead when we have some some uh, freedoms uh, to worship together. Uh, Lord, as as we'll be able to come back together here before long. Lord, may we look to that with renewed vision and, and purpose and desire to be faithful and to be in our place. And Lord, we don't realize sometimes what we have until it's taken away. We don't realize the blessings until they are missing in our life. And so, Lord, we pause and we thank you 
Thank you for our church. Thank you for the opportunity to gather here on a regular basis and uh, meet with our church family. Lord, may uh, you be glorified in our lives through these days. I, I pray that souls would be saved. God, we don't know if this is judgment from you or, or why you've allowed this to take place upon uh, the world, upon our nation, upon our communities. Uh, many of our loved ones have been affected by uh, this virus that is going around. God, through this, may you have our attention. Lord, may we turn to you, not only as individuals, as churches, as a nation. God, uh, turn to you in repentance and faith. And uh, Lord, uh, may our, our walk with you be, be renewed and strengthened. Lord, may souls be saved as a result of uh, what's going on in our world today. May people begin to think about uh, the goodness of God. Uh, Lord, the severity of your judgment. Lord, may you somehow get glory and honor uh, from everything that's going on uh, in the world and certainly from our lives. We are to glorify you. If we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, we're to glorify you. And so, God, that's our desire in these days to bring glory and honor to you. We thank you. Thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for uh, the firm foundation that we have in him, a settled place, a settled place of faith, a settled place of hope and assurance, salvation. And oh Lord, we certainly do look forward to heaven. We're going to sing about that in a bit of time. We talk about the sweet by and by. And we thank you for the sweet now and now. And, and though right now uh, doesn't seem to be so sweet, it's good to know you and it's good to live in these days, to be able to serve you in these days. God, we need your help, we need your strength. May your blessings be upon all that we say and do. May Jesus Christ be glorified. May the name of God be exalted. We'll be careful to thank you and we'll praise you for that you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll sing a few verses of the sweet by and by. For those out here, it's song number 41. In the sweet by and by. Oh, 
family for that song. And I appreciate those that are here helping us with the videoing and all such as that. That last song, we'll sing at the very end. Sing at the very end of the service. So, okay. Isaiah chapter 40 is where we'll be this morning in the Word of God. Isaiah and chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40. I came to this chapter because of a statement that we find in verse number 11. Really had captivated my thoughts on Friday and Saturday. And Isaiah has written in chapter 40 verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. Carry them in his bosom. And shall gently lead those that are with young. Now I had those thoughts in my heart. So I came to this chapter and began to read it. I read it a few times. And really just got stuck in verse number 1. So really we'll just look at verse number 1 today. Of Isaiah chapter 40. Verse number 1. And we'll come back to verse number 11 later. At another message time. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Father, again, we come to you at this time. We ask you for your help. We ask you for your strength. Submit ourselves to you. Again, afresh for this time, for this hour, fill us with your Holy Spirit, God. We can do nothing apart from you. We rely upon you, depend upon you. Thank you for these words. I pray that you would comfort us uh, through these words. I pray that you would speak to our hearts. If there's one that's lost, doesn't know Jesus Christ, may they, uh, in this hour, call upon the Lord, trust in him, believe him. Uh, for the next hour could be eternally too late. God, you speak to your people. You comfort us through your word. We'll thank you for what you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Isaiah, of course, is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He has just recorded 39 chapters of prophecy concerning a sinful nation, Israel. He has talked about the impending judgment of God upon Israel and the coming invasion of the Assyrian king Sennacherib. Uh, these events are recorded for us in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 18, and 2 Chronicles, chapter 32. You can read about some of those events recorded in the history of the nation of Israel there in Kings and Chronicles. Isaiah is a prophet. Isaiah is living during these difficult times. Isaiah is having to, to preach and prophesy concerning difficult days that are yet ahead. Now, Isaiah is able, if you read the accounts in Kings and Chronicles, you'll know that Isaiah was able to prophesy against Sennacherib. The angel of the Lord came and drove the Assyrian army away. Uh, very, uh, to me, it's a jovial statement there where they all woke up dead uh, one morning. Uh, that's where that, uh, that, that uh, passage is. But the Lord drove the Assyrian army away. Then beyond Sennacherib followed Manasseh and Ammon. These were wicked men, wicked kings over God's people, the people of Israel. They forsook the Lord. They walked not in the ways of the Lord. They followed after Baal. And they were idolaters and they led the nation of Israel into idolatry. These first 39 chapters before we get to chapter number 40 and verse 1, Isaiah records the woe of Ephraim's coming judgment. He records the woe of Judah. And Jerusalem, chapters 28 and chapters 29. As a matter of fact, when you read these first 39 chapters, Isaiah uses the word woe 19 times in those passages of Scripture. And from chapter 40 through chapter 46, he'll only use that word woe twice. Israel uh, has been in a difficult way, and God has sent Isaiah to prophesy against her. Isaiah has witnessed during his five centuries of life, maybe he's nearing 60 years old or so in these days here, maybe older, 
Uh, he has witnessed uh, a, a king to come against Samaria and besiege Samaria for three years until Samaria falls and the people of Israel are, are taken away. They go captive into Assyria. They're placed into the cities of the, the Medes. They are they're deported out of their country and their lives are turned upside down. Uh, just to note uh, that Isaiah has witnessed some difficult days in Israel. It's been hard times that he has ministered in, that he has lived in, that Israel has been a part of. Difficult days. He has endured some tough years in his life. Isaiah's message has been a bold message against the house of Israel. It's been a bold message against their hypocrisy, against their idolatry. And Isaiah as a patriot, he loves his people, he loves his God. As a patriot at heart, he is dwelling upon the woes and the sorrows and the troubles of but there comes a point in his life where he will no longer dwell there. He'll no longer dwell in the woes and the judgments. And though from chapter 40 through chapter 46 you'll find some, some dreaded and difficult days and some prophecies against Israel. But Isaiah's message, it seems to change here in chapter number 40. And he no longer dwells on the unending despair of the day the immorality of the times in which he lives, the failure of organized religion, the impending judgments of God, and the subsequent demise of the people of Israel. And when we come to chapter number 40, verse number 1, Isaiah, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God, he says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. With chapter 40 comes a turn. It's a change of heart. It's a renewed focus and a renewed vision from the heart and the pen of Isaiah. We well know that these words are written and recorded under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God. God speaks and writes through Isaiah's personality and his peculiarities through his speech and his manner of speech and God is revealing His eternal Word uh, through the pen, through the mouth of Isaiah. God uh, does that all through His Word. God works in this world through human personality. This man, Isaiah, has witnessed uh, the evils and the horrors around his life. Or if you look at a, a chronology of Isaiah from chapter 1 to chapter 40, it seems that there are 48 to 50 years of ministry and in these, these five decades of ministry that Isaiah has experienced in his life, it's been difficult and difficult. But when we come to chapter number 40, he begins this chapter with a renewed vision. And it comes directly from the Word of God. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. I want to preach just for a little bit here uh, this morning on God's great comfort. We could uh, title chapter 40 a short treaty on the goodness of God. And I'll come back to some of these thoughts at a later date. But for today, we'll focus on verse number 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. I want you to notice the source of comfort in the life of Isaiah and the people of Israel. The source of comfort. They're living in, in horrible days. They're living in tough times. They've witnessed some extreme events in their lifetimes. But God comes and God gives Isaiah this message. Comfort ye my people, saith your God. The source of their comfort is God. Paul knows this God of comfort. He writes of Him over in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians. Uh, chapter number 1, uh, Paul writes these words, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves 
are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Paul calls God the God of all comfort. The New Testament speaks many times of the comfort of God as well as the Old Testament. The Bible speaks about the Spirit of God comforting us. Well, the Bible speaks about God's shepherd in Psalm 23. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Our God is able to comfort us. The source of comfort, the source of true comfort comes from God. Folks will seek comfort in many things. We seek comfort in food. We seek comfort in entertainment. We seek comfort in company. We surround ourselves with people and we find comfort in multitudes of people or with our friends or our family about us. But the truest and the most lasting and the most comforting of comfort will come from the God of all comfort. Isaiah stands and speaks the word comfort, comfort. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, God says. But when Isaiah stands to speak and Isaiah stands to cry uh, forth unto the people of Israel, he comes with the comfort of God in his heart and the comfort of God upon his lips. I want you to notice not only the source of the comfort, but the timing of the comfort. It's found in verse 2. Speak you comfortably, comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The timing of the comfort is after. It's after the warfare. It's after the invasion. It's after the captivity. It's after the struggle. It's after the fight. Her warfare is accomplished. There is a comfort that comes after the warfare, after the trouble, after the fighting has ceased. Notice the comfort comes not only after the warfare, but it comes after the judgment of sin. Your iniquity is pardoned. And Israel has received to the Lord hand, Lord's hand double for all her sins. After the pardoning of iniquity. After the judgment of sins. A God who spared not His own Son, could never simply overlook our sin. But I thank God that with Him, after there is sin, when we come to Him in repentance, when we come to Him asking Him for forgiveness, that after that, that repentance there is forgiveness, and after that forgiveness there is a peace, there was a judgment that came upon, upon Christ as God had placed all of our sin upon Him. And then there was the judgment of God placed upon that. And the payment was made when the blood of Christ was shed. But beyond the judgment of sin and beyond the pardoning of iniquity, there is peace with God. And there is the comfort of God. Yes, there was the judgment. Yes, there was the warfare. But after the warfare, after the judgment is passed, God said, Isaiah, you speak to my people words of comfort. The timing of comfort is after the warfare, after the judgment, after the pardoning. The recipients of comfort. Comfort ye, comfort ye. The Lord says, comfort my People, comfort my people, saith the Lord. God calls Israel my people. My people. I'm glad that God cares for His own. God cares for His own. Sometimes God cares for His own more than they will care for themselves. If you've ever had a close group of friends or someone who maybe thought the same thought processes that you thought, lived life with the same philosophies and ideas, then you might have said, you're my people. You're my, you're my people. I've chosen you. You have chosen me. And we might have 
come from different backgrounds and we might have come from different, different lineage, but we have some tie that binds us together and we are people together. And I'm glad that through the Lord Jesus Christ that I have become a part of the people of God. I am a part of God's family. I am a part of Christ's church. I am glad to be one of God's own. God cares much for His own and God cares for the comfort of His own. And that timing, the comfort that I spoke about a moment ago after the warfare and after the judgment and after the pardoning, I'm glad that even for the people of God that there is a comfort in the midst of difficulty and in the midst of troubles. There is comfort. There is peace. There is consolation from our God. Brother Earl Hughes used to say, peace is all that happens after the war is over with. We might say that comfort is all that happens when the trouble is past, but I'm glad to say that with our God, there can be comfort even in the midst of trouble and even in the midst of difficulty. Paul wrote some words along these lines. I uh, bring, uh, the Holy Spirit brings these to mind. Paul says this, he says, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses. That's in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the infirmity, in the midst of the reproach, in the midst of necessity, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. This is the comfort of God in the midst of trial, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of difficulty, in the darkest part of the night, in the deepest place of your valley. This is the grace of God. This is the help of God in your life sustaining you and helping you to bear up and to go on forward. Comfort ye. Comfort ye my people, saith your God. The source of our comfort is our Heavenly Father. The timing of our comfort is after and even in the midst, the recipients of this comfort, my people. Comfort ye, my people. I'm glad that I belong to Him. You belong to Him today. Is God your God? Is Jesus Christ your Savior? If you've never known the free pardon of sin, if you've never known the forgiveness of God, you've never known true comfort. From chapter 40 and on through the end of the book, Isaiah will write many times now of comfort. He has a turning of heart, a renewed vision. And he begins to speak words of comfort. Certainly there are some judgments to come and some difficult days. But again and again we'll find Isaiah speaking words of comfort. Chapter 40, verse number 1. Comfort ye my people. Chapter 40 and verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. In chapter 49. Chapter 49 of Isaiah. And verse number 13. Isaiah records these words. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted His people and will have mercy upon His afflicted. We can sing and we can be joyful to the Lord that He hath brought comfort. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, because of the comfort of God. In uh, chapter uh, 51 and verse number 3, chapter 51 and verse Number three, we might read verse one. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole in the rock whence ye are digged. Verse three, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. 
There is in the eyes and the heart of Isaiah, he is speaking words of comfort in the present time. But Isaiah is also looking to a comfort and a, a day that is still yet ahead, uh, realizing that Isaiah is a prophet. Many of his words are events that will be yet future from when he speaks them. And uh, perhaps these verses right here are still yet to be fulfilled even in this day, 2020. These verses are still yet to come for the Lord shall comfort Zion. And I'm glad that in our difficulty, God can comfort us. And from the past, God can give us comfort over the difficulties of yesterday. But there with God is comfort even for the future, not knowing what lies ahead, not knowing what tomorrow will be or what a new day will bring. We know that with God, He shall comfort. It's not only in the present and for the past, but for the future, this comfort that Isaiah writes about and speaks of, chapter 52 of Isaiah, verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. In verse 9, Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. Why? For the Lord hath comforted His people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare His holy arm in the eyes of of all the nations at the arm of God at the power of God being revealed Isaiah under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God he says break forth into joy and sing together for the Lord hath comforted his people the comfort of God the comfort of God ought to break out of our face. It ought to break out of our heart. It ought to break out of our lips. It ought to break out of our life. Break forth in joy because of the comfort of God. In chapter 61, words of prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. We know that because he quoted them and attributed them to, to himself in the Gospels. Chapter 61 Verses 1 and 2, we find the two advents of Jesus Christ, both represented here in these verses. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. When the Lord quoted these verses, He stopped right there. The last part of verse number 2 is something that is yet to come. And the day of vengeance of our God. Then He says this, to comfort all that mourn. Might I say in the first coming of Jesus Christ, there is great comfort to be found. God's comfort found in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made of a woman. Jesus Christ became flesh for us. Jesus Christ who humbled Himself and left heaven and became a man. Jesus Christ, a high priest touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus Christ, a man who knows what it is to be tempted like as we are. Jesus Christ, a man knowing what it is to be hungry, knowing what it is to be thirsty, knowing what it is to be rejected, knowing what it is to be refused. Jesus Christ, knowing what it is to be broken, knowing what it is to be able to comfort and to help those around Him. Everywhere He went, He brought comfort. He afflicted the comfortable and He comforted the afflicted. Those that were broken, He healed. Those that were sick, He made whole. Those who were empty, He filled. His first coming brings great comfort because of His first coming. We have redemption because of His first coming. There's payment for our sin. 
His first coming brings comfort. And Isaiah, looking at his second coming, he sees it as a day of comfort. A day of comfort for the Jewish people. We know through prophecy that the world will be gathered against the Jew. Jesus Christ will come back in His revelation, in His power, and in His glory. And it will be a day of vengeance of our God. Those who are the enemies of God will feel the strong hand of God against them. But those that are His people in that day will be comforted. They'll be in great mourning for the trouble that is about them, but there will be great comfort. Both advents of Christ bring comfort. And then in chapter number 66, in verse 13, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. And ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now, in all honesty, most fathers are not very good at comforting. If it's not bleeding, if it's not broken, you'll be okay. Get up, dust yourself off, get about your business. That's not very comforting to a child. That's not very comforting when you're hurting. And you come for some consolation. You come for someone to put their arm around you. A father doesn't have a whole lot of that. Most often, it's the mother that has that for the child. But the Word of God is this. As a mother comforteth a child, so will I comfort you. As the comfort of a mother, so God our Father is able to comfort us. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. Some applications that we might find today from Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 1. As did Isaiah among his people spread God's words of comfort so you and I can spread God's words of comfort today. There's lots of panic. There are many words of fear being spread. You and I can speak words of of comfort. How comforting it must have been. Isaiah, whom when he came, had words of woe, had words of judgment. Isaiah comes and stands on the street corner in town and he preaches that judgment is coming. Woe to you people. And now Isaiah stands and he preaches words of comfort. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith the Lord. As God's people, we can speak comforting words and spread God's words of comfort. The heart and the tongue of God's people should rejoice just as the earth is prophesied here to sing and be joyful for the Lord hath comforted His people, you and I, our heart and our tongue should rejoice in God's comfort even in days of trouble, even in days of affliction, even in days of trial. You can sing and you can have joy in your heart. How in the world could Paul and Silas in the midst of a prison, in the midst of a storm, sing and pray because they knew the comforting hand of God. The heart and the tongue of God's people should rejoice in God's comfort. We can rejoice for what God has done, for what God has given us victory over, for what God is doing, and we can rejoice for what God will yet do in Zion. We can rejoice with the Jew that one day God's going to make everything right with them. We can rejoice over that. That God's going to comfort in Zion in anticipation of God's 
mighty works ahead, you and I can be comforted. It might seem dark, it might seem bleak in your life today, but you can look to the future and you can know that you have a God who is able to take the, the darkness and the bleakness of today and turn it into victory and triumph tomorrow. You can have comfort in your heart. I ask myself this question. When last did my tongue break forth in joy? When did it last break forth into singing? Look, life gets heavy on us sometimes. And it shows on our face because it's wearing on our heart. May the comfort of God break forth from our tongues. May the comfort of God break forth from our hearts in joy and in peace. We have comfort in Christ's accomplishments from His first coming. Binding up, proclaiming liberty, opening prisons. And we have comfort in knowing that Christ great works of comfort for the Jewish people, God's desire and purpose for them, those days are yet ahead. Comfort not only in what God is doing, but comfort in what God will yet do. And as Paul said, the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. What trouble is in your heart today? Is it fear? Is it dread? Is it panic? Is it need? Is it sickness? Is it weakness? Is it loss of lack of faith? Loss of courage? Weakness of heart, of mind. In these days, our, 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 our emotions get out of control. Finances are upside down. We're all out of sorts. We're all out of routine. The children are out of routine. Life is seemingly in turmoil and trouble. We may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, if there's anybody in this world today that ought to have peace in their heart, it's the child of God. If there's anyone today who ought to be able to be comforted in their life, it's the child of God. If there's anyone today who ought to be able to spread words of comfort, it ought to be the child of God. Do you know God today as your father? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ, if you've never called upon Him, ask Him for forgiveness of sins, calling in repentance and faith, trusting and believing in Jesus Christ as your only hope, for salvation as your only hope for heaven. If you've never done that, you are in great trouble. Not just trouble today, but for eternity. Separated from God in judgment, in hell. But oh, God is able to take hell and to turn it into heaven when we come through Jesus Christ. And God is able to take trouble and turn it into strength. God is able to take weakness and turn it into His great power. What a God. What a God. Why don't you come to Him today trusting, believing Him as your only hope, as your only need, casting everything upon Him the God of all comfort who is able to comfort us in all our tribulation. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, 
saith the Lord. What a change of heart. What a change of vocabulary. What a change of purpose. What a change of vision Isaiah had that day when he began to record Isaiah chapter 40. May your heart, may your vision, may your eyes be cast today upon the comfort of God. The God of all comfort. Father, today, today for the trouble that is about us. There is comfort today. For the trials in which we live, there's comfort today. For the turmoil, there's comfort. We need your comfort. God, when folks begin to search, may their search be in the Word of God for your truth. When Hearts begin to cry out, may it be to the throne of grace. When the burdens are greater than we are able to bear, may we find that your grace, your strength is sufficient. Your strength is made perfect in our weakness. God, in difficult hours, may we find the comfort of God. Father, you know the hearts of your people. Lord, you know where our nation is. You know where our churches are. You know where we as individuals are. God, do a work in our land. Do a work in our church. Do a work in my life in these days. I sure do love you. I sure do thank you. For your goodness. For your grace. For your mercy your salvation for your son Jesus Christ may he be exalted may he be glorified may some lost soul in trouble without God no comfort may some lost soul call upon him this day trusting and believing unto life eternal do you be glory and honor we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts in this day, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll sing one other song before we are finished here. It's 124. Be not dismayed. God will take care of you. 124. service there uh, come remain in your car we have a transmitter that we can 
uh, uh, transmit into your FM radio tuner. And so we'll have a service out there at 3 o'clock this afternoon. It's a lovely, a beautiful day the Lord has given us. We appreciate the opportunity that we'll have this afternoon. And I hope that you'll be able to join us there. Thank you for being a part of our service this morning. We should look forward to being together again physically here on the property. Until then, we'll do what we can. Keep looking up. God loves you. And in, in, uh, keep telling others and, and uh, spreading the word that our God, our God is the answer. Our God is the answer. I believe that. And if you believe that in your heart, you get through these days with a smile. Break forth into joy. God bless you. Have a great day.